Hi everybody. Today we're looking at Elizabeth, Zachariah's wife, and the title of this study is called The Believing Wife. If you want to look at Luke chapter 1 verses 5 to 7 and then 23 to 25 and then 39 through to 45, that will give you the story. So the first thing we need to realise is that Elizabeth's story is very much the story of Zachariah. A couple, childless, both much, much older. Their, their opportunities for having children long gone, or so they thought. And I want you to imagine what it must have been like for them in a community, in a society where having children was very, very important. For Zachariah, having a son to carry on his name, to carry on the priestly duties, coming from a priestly family would have been so important. And you might remember the story of when, when the little Jesus gets lost. Well, he isn't lost, but his parents think they are. Again, on that journey, children were there. Children were always in and around wherever adults were. So for Elizabeth and Zachariah, it must have been really, really painful. As we know, not having children when they are so desperately wanted today is very, very painful as well. Now for Elizabeth, she would probably have been holding on to that sense of hope, which she saw in scripture, the scriptures that she would have known. So she would have recalled times past when God had intervened in couples' relationships and children had been born. For example, uh, Rachel, the wife of Jacob, she goes on to have Joseph, and that's Genesis chapter 30, or Hannah in 1 Samuel. And there are others that God just um, is, is with and works through as well over the years, like Abraham and Sarah, the parents of Isaac. So she would quite possibly have just been holding on to those stories every single day in her prayers. So what we looked at last time was that Zachariah had had this experience and then he'd been struck dumb so he couldn't speak. And can you imagine how terrible that would have been. He wouldn't have been able to kind of convey to Elizabeth what indeed had happened to him. Can you imagine him going home from his temple duties and in some way trying to communicate with Elizabeth as to what had happened? I mean, it, it just doesn't bear even thinking about, does it? How must she have felt? Now for Zachariah, his experience at the temple would have been a real privilege. He would have been bursting, wanting to tell people about what he'd done and how wonderful it was to serve the Lord in that way. And yet that was taken from him. The ability to tell others what had happened to him, what God had said to him was taken away for the right time. I find that quite interesting. So can you imagine when he got back and maybe he and Elizabeth sat together on their own and what she must have been thinking? Now, Luke is quite discreet over this kind of time, but we can assume that it would have been very, very emotional. Before Zachariah had been able to communicate to Elizabeth all that had happened in the temple, so this would have been no doubt quite devastating for him. You can imagine her being quite distressed for him as well. He would have been a man who was probably not slow to speak and yet all of a sudden that was gone. They could not hide the fact that Zachariah could not speak or hear, maybe because he was not compelled to tell everybody what had happened. What had happened was private, intimate and personal for he and his wife alone at that point in time. Now that I think is, is, a, is a different way of looking at it isn't it? It's important whenever we read scripture to really think about what 
would have happened in that space. Imagine the space, imagine the room where the story is playing out. How exactly do you picture it? Sometimes we just read the verses and we let them wash over us and we get on to the next bit. But why don't you pause actually in the story, pause in the room that they are in and see what you notice. So then we've got this unexpected visitor. It says in the sixth month, there's a knock at the door. And of course, it's opened and this young cousin from Nazareth is there. So you imagine them inviting her in. And it says, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, something drastic and dramatic happened. The baby moved within her. So she'd not seen an angel. She'd not had any dream. Yet she knew that Mary was the mother to be of the Messiah. She knew something happened deep within her. Something happened to the life within her that pointed to other life. So she was filled with the Holy Spirit and the elderly Elizabeth found herself saying in a loud voice to this teenage girl, you are the most blessed of all women and blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? For as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby jumped within me with gladness. How happy she is to believe that the Lord's message to her will come true. So that's 39 to 45. And you can imagine Zechariah being there again, just kind of stood there looking intently. He couldn't speak, but he could see and he would have been able to see exactly what was going on. Can you imagine the look on the faces of Elizabeth and Mary? They're together. They're at the opposite ends of the age spectrum, but they are sharing something deep within them. This is bringing the generations together through new life, a new life in John, the forerunner of Jesus the King. So you can imagine Zachariah somehow inspired by what he's actually seeing. And Elizabeth's words are so important to Mary as well. Elizabeth is the first person to believe her, the very, very first person. Before this, it's brought nothing but shame and embarrassment in the village that she comes from. Even Joseph has been slow to believe her. And she breaks out into a song of praise to God that was reminiscent of how Hannah had prayed when she handed over her child Samuel into the service of the tabernacle. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 2. And in time, Elizabeth wrote it all down for Zachariah, I'm certain. And they were both encouraged as they saw that piece of the jigsaw fit in and where they fit into the story of salvation. So Mary stays with Elizabeth for, <clears throat> for three months. And you can imagine how much they talked and shared during all of that time. And how much of God would have been in those conversations between these two women. Now, it's important, I think, here that we remember that there is nothing that God cannot do. Verse 36 and verse 37. There is nothing that God cannot do. Let's think about the end of her shame. So the time would have been coming for Elizabeth to give birth. So Mary would have gone back and they arranged for her to go back. And it would have been a great day when Elizabeth actually gave birth to a son. We know when the baby is a week old, uh, they take him to circumcise him. They're going to name him Zachariah. But of course, no, it's John. It's John. And everybody wants to know why John. You've got nobody in your family called John. But Zachariah is giving up his name to the name of one which has been given by God. So God is always the centre of this. Zachariah asks for something to write on 
and he confirms the name of the child and you can imagine how surprised everybody would be but also filled with fear probably as well because this was so out of the ordinary so it's Zachariah's time then to prophesy all those months he's been quiet and then all of a sudden what he's lost is given back to him and he's able to sing a song of joy a song of truth so they could see why their prayer had been so long unanswered. Their prayer was tied up with God's plan in God's time. It wasn't tied up in their plan and in their time. Now, if we want all of God's will to be done, then that will involve the generations to come. And that means it's not necessarily our time. God thinks long thoughts we don't after the re resurrection jesus said to thomas happy are those who have not seen and yet believe elizabeth is an example of that steady quiet faith so another thing to point out before i finish is that there is no ageism when it comes to god zachariah and elizabeth and their role in the coming of Christ Jesus demonstrate that God has a purpose for his people that doesn't preclude their being part of it, however old they are or however young they are. God is never, ever finished with you. He's something for each and every one of us in each and every stage of our lives. God has new things he gives us new gifts. He's there in every season of our lives. And we need to be patient. We need to hold wisdom. We need to be humble and be people of humility. And we need to know that God is present. And when our prayers seem that they're not answered, there is always a reason for that. So take care, everybody. God bless and we'll speak soon.